Well, good morning. Wow, this is great. I, I love how, uh, how many conversations are going on. This is really wonderful. It's been, I've been missing you all, and it's good to see uh, so many of you have returned home from vacations, and I hope you've had good uh, times away and safe travels. Uh, I'll continue to keep uh, other members of our congregation um, who are out um, traveling in our prayers as well. Uh, there's been a, a quite a bit going on here at Calvary Lutheran this month. Um, we uh, last week we did our first photo session for our photo directory uh, over at John Payne Studio. It went very very well. Thank you so, to all who signed up and showed up uh, for that. The, there is one more session this week, and if you would like to sign up for that, it's from it's on Thursday from four to seven. And if you want to sign up for that, there's a green sheet in your bulletin, right? Can someone hold it up? There should be. <laughs> All right, good, yeah. That's it right there, the green sheet in your bulletin. Please uh, sign up for this uh, week's photo session if you're available. And um, it goes very quickly. Um, it's very uh, professional and very well done. Uh, so thanks to John Payne and, and his photo- photography studio for that. Um, if you are not able to make any of these sessions, we will have um, more sessions in the fall, probably late September, early October. But let me know what works best for you and your schedule. Um, we are going to make sure we get everyone in our photo directory that we haven't had in like seven years. Um, I have another great update to share with you all. Uh, uh, the RIP medical debt campaign has officially come to a close. Uh, our campaign uh, has been... Um, uh, very successful. We have we raised thirteen thousand four hundred ninety-two dollars and sixty-seven cents, which is phenomenal. Yeah, please let's please uh, give a pause for that. Uh, that is uh, um, well over a million dollars of medical debt forgiveness. And right now, RIP the uh, the organization is um, going out buying up that debt and are going to let us know as soon as possible as to where that forgiveness took place and, and for who. Uh, so I, I eagerly await uh, that information to share with you all. Um, thanks again for participating in that campaign along with Grace Episcopal. And um, it's, uh, it was a very hopeful and very um, inspiring campaign. So thanks again for working together as a church. Um, there are uh, volunteers and supplies needed for the Forest Hill Elementary Welcome Back Luncheon on August 22nd. Please see Nina Harding or Karen Whitley if you would like to volunteer. And again, there's another insert in the bulletin with a list of supplies needed. Um, I think that's all for announcements. Pastor Lauren, do you have anything you'd like to share about I got a good smile? Okay. Then uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to the prelude. Will the congregation please rise and face the baptismal font for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, We confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, 
we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear this good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love God as God, love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Okay, so we have a story today about two ladies. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. I just had a text. Let me see what that was about. Okay. Um, I'll take care of that later. Um, so we have these two ladies in our story, and uh, are Mary and Martha. Wait a minute. I just happen to think I need to add bread to my grocery list. Give me a second. Let me put that down. Bread. Okay, so I've got bread on my grocery list. I won't forget that now. Um, so we've got the two ladies, Mary and Martha, and Jesus came to visit. Oh, wait a minute. I just happen to remember. I have, my kids have a dental appointment on Tuesday. Okay, good, that's on there. Good, make sure that's there. Oh, wait a minute, well, I'm at, well, I've got something going on next week. Oh, okay, never mind. Ooh, I've got a lot of stuff going on next week. And, oh, I've got to go, remember, I must have to set an alarm. I've got to go into work today, and that's not my usual time to go into work, so I need to make sure I do that. And, um, okay, so wait a minute, where was I? We have a story about two ladies with Mary and Martha, right? And Jesus was coming to visit, and Martha is running around the house getting everything ready, right? And um, Mary's sitting down and listening to Jesus, and, oh, wait a minute, one more thing. Oh, okay. Somebody texted me to remind me that I've got to be at church or work at 3.30. Um, so Martha was a little distracted, wasn't she? She's having to get all this stuff done. And it's stuff that needs to be done, right? I mean, these are important things. But do they always have to be done at that moment? No. So that's what Jesus was trying to say. Martha, just chill out. It's okay, yes, your house needs to be cleaned, and yes, we might need to have food cooked and everything, right? But take a breath. It's okay to sit and just listen and do what needs to be done for you, right? Put away the distractions. You know, here, I make sure my phone's turned off, no more text, right? Put it away, and don't think about it. Focus on me. And sometimes that's not always easy, right? We go to say our prayers and, oh, something pops in our mind. And then we start thinking about that and we're not praying anymore, right? Or sometimes we, we, we try to come to church and we're trying to listen to the sermon. And, you know, maybe Pastor Paul says one word that makes our mind think about something else, right? And then what are we thinking about? Not the sermon anymore, right? You know, I got to think about this and this and this, right? So we tend to get distracted. Those are things that we have in this world. But God says you always need to stop and take time for him, right? So I've got some different ways to help you when you're doing your prayers, right? And these are just some things that I had around my house. These are some, actually a couple of these things were chorus um, that she's gotten over the years to kind of help you pray. She's got a, a prayer block. I don't know if anybody of y'all have one of those, right? Where, you know, can't think what to pray, so let me just roll the dice and Okay, so I'm going to say this prayer, right? So sometimes that helps. Um, okay, this is something she made in Bible school years ago, maybe even before some of you were born. I don't know how old it is. But it's just a little prayer chain. And um, At the time we did it, each thing meant different things. I think this was like, because this one kind of looked like dirt, and so earth, and then the water, and um, creation, and I think everything had a meaning, but I don't remember what those meanings were. That's been 10 or so years ago. But it's just something to help you reflect, you know, to count through. And, you know, when you say a prayer, you, you ask God for something, and then you thank God for something, and, you know, maybe thank him for somebody else, or pray for different people, right? So as you put a finger on each one, you lift somebody else a prayer, or you thank him for something, right? So it's just something to kind of help focus. Um, oh, this is something I found at my house this morning. This is something I was crocheting a while back. 
but I can kind of do the same thing. So you can eat, there's kind of flowers inside of it, right? So I could actually put my fingers on it. And every time I touch one of the flowers, I focus on something else that I want to pray for. Um, okay, this is actually one of course hair ribbons. How in the world? Well, I can hold it. So it's not one she wears currently, obviously. Um, and then pray for different things, right? Just as I touch each one, I can say another prayer, right? I think this one has like eight things I could pray for. So um, it's nothing fancy at all, is it? Or if I don't even have anything like that, I can just go and get me a piece of string. Right? And then just tie some knots in it. And I can just put knots in it. Nothing fancy, but each knot can become something I can touch to help me focus, right? So now, okay, so right now I've got three knots in it, so I could tie more knots in it, but just something to touch to help me, what was the purpose of it? To focus on God, right? So that way when I'm praying, my focus is where? On Him. So sometimes having that tangible thing, something I can hold on to, helps me, ground me with what I'm doing so then I can focus on what I need to do and not everything else, right? So if you'll help me say a prayer, okay? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you so much for this wonderful day and for all the many things that you have put into my life. Help me to focus on you so I may learn more about your love. So I may show others your love in all that I do and all that I say. Amen. Thank you. So this was not the best day to forget my glasses, so bear with me, please. See if I can get it far enough away. Uh, The first reading from Genesis 18, 1 through 10a. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Word of God, word of life. do 
not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their help and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. O oh, who may abide upon your holy The second reading is from Colossians 1, 15 through 28. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproach irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, become a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am contemplating what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of this glory, the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in his wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Word of God, word of life. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Now, as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Over the last couple of weeks, we have been reading through the 10th chapter of Luke, hearing stories involving a particular theme that I think stands out quite clearly. It is the theme of hospitality. 
Two weeks ago, we read Jesus sent out 70 of his followers to many towns and places that he himself planned to visit. They were more or less told to see who would welcome them and offer them proper hospitality, peace, food, shelter, shared fellowship, etc. As for those who did not welcome them, they were to brush them off like the dust on their feet. Because hospitality was important, key to the gospel and ministry of Jesus, in fact. Then last week we heard the well-known story of the Good Samaritan. What made him so good? Well, after two others had passed by the beaten man on the side of the road, offering no help at all, the Samaritan not only helped the battered stranger, but he went out of his way to get him the proper care and shelter that he needed paying for it out of his own pocket. This story was told in response to the question of who exactly our neighbor is that we are to love as ourselves. So we're hearing that hospitality is sometimes more than just welcoming people into your home, that sometimes it's going out of your home, out of your way, to show mercy and kindness to the one in need. And it's not about who our neighbor is but actually being a neighbor to others. Hospitality is about truly loving and caring for anyone and everyone God puts on our path. These two stories directly fall one after the other, leading up to our reading for today. Like the Good Samaritan, the story of Mary and Martha is one that is quite familiar to many of us. What is important to remember here, however, is that Jesus does not say to Martha, who complains that Mary isn't helping her with all the work, that what she is doing is wrong and that she should immediately stop. He says to her that she has become so worried and distracted by the work that she is missing out on the gift he is giving to both her and her sister and, in fact, the entire world. Again, Martha's work of hospitality wasn't wrong. It was extremely important, in fact. Jesus and his disciples were in great need to be welcomed, fed, sheltered, and cared for in every way Martha could provide. The problem wasn't with her work. The problem was her issue with her sister Mary, who wasn't joining her in that work. The problem was her issue. Martha was always do that whenever we feel something is unfair? Why do we pit ourselves against those we should be closest to, those we should be celebrating with, rejoicing in the right with, instead of seeking for the wrong to rejoice over? We take out our frustration not on the unjust system or structure that is the true cause for all the unfairness, but instead on those we think should be suffering along with us. Because apparently misery truly loves company. It must be because we care more about the sharing, the quality of pain with others than we do about sharing the quality of life. Hospitality, true hospitality as the kingdom of God teaches it, does not pit one oppressed group against another. No, it focuses on the life-giving justice for all not with vindictive, punitive justice that just spreads the pain around like taking an eye for an eye, but with justice that provides for all, making sure that absolutely everyone has exactly what they need that spreads life and the goodness of God around. As Jesus says to Martha, and he says it in a way that I can't help but think of the Brady Bunch, Martha, 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 you are distracted and worried by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary gets it. She understands the single need in that moment and shows time and time again in Scripture that she is not going to give it up. Jesus is in her home. He is standing right in front of her, sharing with her and her entire household the good news, the gospel, the kingdom of heaven. This is it. This is all that matters. This is what she lives for. And Christ is right there with her and everyone else, 
giving freely the love of God that was intended for all of creation since the beginning of creation. This is indeed the better part, and Jesus says that will not be taken from Mary. And nor does Jesus take it from Martha. Read the scripture again. In my opinion, it leaves it open for an invitation to Martha to join him at his feet, to listen to him, to be a disciple with him. That is literally what a disciple is. Those who follow, those who, who sit at their master's feet. Not for the sake of work or worries or any of the other many distractions in the world. In Emmanuel, God who is with us, Jesus provides for all. No one is meant to be left out, not for any reason. All are called to partake in the better part of the body of Christ. All are called to be disciples, women, men, all, Jews, Samaritans, Samaritans, to sit at the feet of the master, to listen, to learn, and be made new. Jesus and Mary together are breaking through a social taboo of that time, as I'm sure you're all aware. Martha expected Mary to help her in the doing because that's what her role in society was at the time. That's what she was expected to do by the culture around her. That's what she was pressured to do and fulfill. It was expected that the women would keep busy and the men would visit together, recline, and enjoy one another's company. However, Mary could not help but sit at the feet of Jesus. Again, this was taboo. But then to add to what was likely frowned upon by many, Jesus not only allowed Mary to stay and listen, but he told Martha and all who were there that Mary had chosen the better way. This is not just a quick blurb about women's equality but about Jesus offering God's radical hospitality that overcomes injustice and is grounded in love and mercy and compassion. This hospitality, this justice, is offered to each and every one of us. Jesus was not sent for just the men or the Jews or the wealthy or the righteous. He was sent for all people. And I think Jesus was rejoicing and praising the boldness of Mary for choosing to take hold of this justice, this better part that was given to her. This justice, this radical, loving hospitality that defies social norms and how the world views what is right and wrong, this was now hers, and it would not be taken away. We hear so often in Scripture how the kingdom of God has come near, and Mary wanted to be near the kingdom of God, wanted to be sitting at its feet, wanted to partake in that justice where all are given what they are need, what they need. As stewards of this body, his body, we too belong. We too belong at the feet of Jesus. This is it. Gather together in his name at the foot of the cross. This is what we live for. And Christ is with us always and forever, giving freely the love of God. We belong to the best part. And nothing can take that from us. So where do you see God's radical hospitality in your life? Here in this place. Are you and I, as Calvary Lutheran, offering that to those who need it most? Is there a welcome to those who are not welcomed? In many places, in many churches, it's difficult to to just walk through that door. Many people see a sign that says, all are welcomed, and they know they're not really. How do we, as a congregation, as a church, open those doors for others to go out and provide true hospitality to share that there is a space at the feet of Jesus to be a disciple and that God works through all people? Are we serving as the hands and feet of God's work towards this type of liberating hospitality that defies the norm society has placed 
on our lives. A church that has been led to be worried and distracted by many things inevitably will be a church that dwells in the shallows of frantic meetings, anxious stewardship campaigns, and events designed simply to perpetuate the institution. When a congregation is led to position itself at Christ's feet, studying and nurturing a faith that seeks understanding, that seeks one another, relationship and true, love and true hospitality, then even the details of common life begin to resound with the good news. Then hospitality reaps its rich rewards of love, hope, peace, and on each of us. Limitless, for we are blessed to be a blessing. This is most certainly true. And in many ways, these words can be expanded upon even further. For example, we are created to create. We are loved to love. We are forgiven to forgive. We are free to set free. We are given so that we too might give in the love of Christ. There is so much to be distracted and worried over in this world. But Christ has come to assure us there is need of only one thing. Do not be worried or distracted. Do not pit yourselves against others simply to spread out the pain. Sit and listen at the feet of the Lord. God is with us, and we are blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Ever-present God, in Christ you feel all things. As your church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you created all things, visible and invisible. Teach humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. You reconcile all things. Motivate those in power to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind, and to protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Sustain all who serve as caregivers and soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit, especially Tom Mills, Oliver M. Bowden, Patton Ed Silver, and all those we pray for now out loud or silently in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. God of grace, hear our prayer. You brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table. Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' His name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with you. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear the fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet, for all are welcome. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
Please rise as you're able and receive the blessings of our Lord. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.